So welcome back to another episode of playing around with broken shit. Today we've got the VFD that I found in the garbage at the scrap place from the last episode. If you want to take a look at how this thing works inside and how I diagnosed what was wrong with it, look in the previous episode. I'll link it there. Otherwise, this one here is going to be about repairing this thing, coming to the conclusion that I wasn't 100% correct in my diagnosis, and finally seeing it come to life for the first time. All right, the usual disclaimer, uh, this thing runs at 400 some odd volts, DC and 240 AC, so if you don't know what you're doing, don't do this or you will die. Probably not a slow death, but a painful one. This EMC filter PCB is out of the circuit, so I've connected directly right there the 240. It's not powered yet, but it will be in a second. So there's the 240. This is out of the circuit. And I'm just going to show you um, that we have DC bus and that the issue is here in the corner on this flyback converter switch mode power supply. So set our meter to DC there. And here we should have our DC bus. Guess you can see it, 317 volts. Yeah. And then if you'll notice over here, yeah, you can probably see that this board does not light up. So there's no power happening here. This I see right here is the um, 7805, which is the five volt supply for the microcontroller here. So if we just have a look at what it's doing there we have 0 0.6 volts and 0 0.1 something okay so the input and the output are both wrong here there's a little ic right there which is driving this mosfet right here we're just switching everything and from this transformer we get all the voltages if you want the details of that go on the last video basically we can see this transformer and this whole circuit is not providing the voltages that we need at the linear ICs. We can also have a look at this IC here. So that's also a 7805, which is getting its power right here. And we can see there is a whole lot of nothing going on. Okay, so um, let's power this guy down. Um, be really careful, by the way, when you do this. So now I've removed the 240, but there's giant caps in here. And if we measure the DC bus, there is a discharge resistor on this, but it's not very big. So you see, we still have 300 volts here and it's going to stay here for quite a bit of time. That has been about five minutes or so. Let's see where we're at. 152 volts DC. All right, another couple minutes went by. We're at 95 volts DC. So we take our little electrical screwdriver here and let's just uh, zap that out of there. It was a bit more violent than I expected. 15 volts. All right, we're basically at zero. So now we can start working. What do we got here? So I ordered the IC, the switching IC, the control IC, which is right here and I ordered the MOSFET. My feeling is that it's not the MOSFET but rather the switching IC so I'm gonna go ahead and change that first. All right so what you want to do when you have just one soldering iron is flood all of the pins with solder. You need one big gob on one side and one big gob on the other side. Yeah this is tough to do with the camera in my face. Okay, like that. Uh, you see, we got it on the chicken food there. Make sure if you break one of those off around it, that you stick it back on after. And I'll get to the other side. So same thing here, flood all the pins with solder, like that. Okay, now what you want to do is we need to get a bunch of heat into it. So heat one side, hold the IC with your tweezers, and keep heating it so it's got to stay liquid long enough that when you jump to the other side both sides will be momentarily liquid and you'll be able to pull the IC off the board again don't uh, put any force on it 
don't pull hard because you'll rip off a trace just ever so gently let it pop off the board this is probably going to take a little while there it is i wasn't holding it but there you go so one solder stick got the ic off now you're asking what to do with this mess that's left on the board that's what the solder wick is for so go ahead and put the wick down into the mess you made let it soak up all that extra solder we dislodge this cap here we'll have to put that back okay so and you see and then you see the pads again of the ic uh, make sure you check the orientation by the way before you remove it i think pin one was down here and then take your pcb cleaner i hope you can see something clean all this stuff out of here the, the solder is going to leave flux all over the board and the flux just makes everything kind of nasty to work with so clean it off as you go Okay, let's go. Got me some cutters here. We're gonna just cut off the three pins because there's no way to desolder it. I bent this little uh, EMC cap out of the way. Don't care about it anyways. And just cut the pins one by one. There's one. So now we have the, the pins stuck in the PCB there, but now they're by themselves. So you can just take your little soldering stick here. It'd be good to tin it with a bit of solder. So put a bit on each one that it makes a good thermal connection then grab the pin with your tweezer and pull it out hope it's the right muscle with the same pin out it, part number is the same and then just slip these into the holes we have to bend the middle pin forwards how they had it so like this and this so then just solder the three legs and then we are ready to test this thing all right um got our meter got the little board plugged back then Blah. got the little board plugged back in um it's not yet hooked up to power i didn't try it yet i just verified all the connections everything seems to be good um we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and check the voltages at the supply here so at the linear regulators if we get the correct voltages or if it explodes okay seems like no good signs of life interesting it's different but it's still wrong all right i have to think about this and um a little bit of time has passed um i was probing around a little bit and i was a bit suspicious of this five volt regulator here well it was this five volt regulator that i ripped off of there and then did this very um, highly professional installation of a new component in the wrong package um, as a tempa permanent test so let's grab the meter and again plug it in and let's see what happens hmm. it looks like not much again that's not our problem I guess tomorrow is now today. Um, I've been messing around with this thing a little bit, and here's what I figured out. I got the schematic here. Um, that's the schematic of this um, flyback converter. I just found it from the data sheet of the IC. Um, then I marked out the IC itself here and put the voltages, which should be there when it's good. And I went ahead and checked all the voltages. Um, and one fabulous time I got this thing to run so the voltages actually were all okay on one start and what I changed was actually what we have at the moment so I can show you so this thing is still charged so 
Um, I changed the IC, it's not the IC. I changed this power MOSFET right here. That wasn't the issue. Then I changed this five volt regulator. That was also not the issue. Then I went through the entire converter and checked all of the diodes according to the schematic here. All the diodes checked out. Then as a last step, I desoldered these two ELCOs and measured them. They were both okay. But when I soldered them back in and started it, that's when it started up. So my feeling is, even if these are measuring okay, I think they're dead. So I found in my storage some new caps. Okay, are you guys as excited as I am? I couldn't get to these two because there's a second PCB under and my solder stick is a bit too fat to get in there. So I changed these two here. Um, let's go. Did you hear that? That, boys and girls, was the sweet, sweet sound of victory. Hold on, can we not get electrocuted and show you the screen? Nah, it's doing stuff. I don't know what DCB is, but it's doing stuff. Let's check out our various voltages. So don't fall apart, please. So DC bus, 418. I'm going to keep the ground there. We can check the voltage regulators. So this guy is a, oops, 78.0. Oh, uh, this seems like it's, so 20 volts on the input, 5 volts on the output. Nice. This guy was doing weird stuff before. It's probably still doing weird stuff. I guess that's something for the IO that's not really used. And bit, 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 don't fall apart. Um, then if you look at this little IC, that's our switching IC. And now we're gonna attempt to probe that guy without dying. So this should be the five volt reference, pin number eight, five volts. Then we have the input voltage of the IC should be 15. There you go. Then that's actually all we really need to know. So, um, ta -da. let's put it back together, connect it to a motor and see if it actually does stuff. All right, guys, we got it hooked up here. So I don't actually have a whole lot of three phase motors lying around, but I do have the one in my drill here. So I've disconnected the Chinese VFD, connected it here with this absolute pinnacle of safety system. Here we've got a wire to set the speed. Here we've got a switch connected to the forward go button, uh, by the way. Uh, you can see it's ready to rock and roll. This whole business is connected here. Focus with my nose. And ready for the moments of truth. Oh, this is harder one-handed, huh? Fuck. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's the story of finding this thing in the garbage, getting it all fixed up, and finally getting it to run. Thanks a lot for joining, and see you guys in the next one. Ciao!